Hello, how are you? I hope everyone is gesund and stark. Begashmis uberuchnis, gesund, stark and fehler. Begashmis uberuchnis. I hope everyone is strong and healthy and happy physically and spiritually. Today we're going to speak a thought for the week for Parshas Shmini. It's Erev Shabbos Kodesh. Today is Erev Shabbos Kodesh. Chof Ches Nissen. Everyone knows what happened 30 years ago. The Rebbe spoke a very dramatic, highly charged Sikha, where he spoke about how now he's giving it over to us to bring Mashiach. So we'll speak about the connections between Shmini, Chavches, Nisin, and this week we start learning Pirkei Avos. But first, we'll start with the Pasuk. Last year, when we were saying Kapitel Kufiates, we started every shear with a Pasuk from Kufiates. But this year, we're saying Kufchaf, so we won't use always a Pasuk from Kufchaf, which is very short. We could use any Pasuk. So we'll start with Shema Yisrael, Adino Yeliheinu, Adino Yechad. So the most famous prayer starts Shema Yisrael, hear. O Israel, you have to hear, listen, be a makabal, absorb it well. In this week's Parsha, we have one of the most famous stories, a very tragic event, which is something which should be discussed in general, the contrast that one of the greatest days in the history of Am Yisrael, Reish Chodesh Nisim Vayihibayeh when Hashem came down into the Mishkan, was also the day that Nadav Aviyu passed away. They were punished. Of course, we're talking about Sadiqim, so it's a whole different level. And they were punished because they did a sin. So in general, that's something to discuss about how we could have a great event. And that's on one hand. But on the other hand, we have such a story that happens at the same time. And obviously, there must be a lesson in that. But what was their sin? So there's many different explanations. But first, we'll read, <coughs> excuse me, what the Pasuk says. Vayichu b'nei Aaron, not the Vaviyu, ish machtosei, vayitnu ven eish, vayisimu leakotoires, vayakrivu thnei Hashem, eish zara, ashaloi tziva oisom. The sons of Aaron, not the Vaviyu, each took his fire pan, they put fire in them and placed incense upon it, and they brought before Hashem an alien fire. They had not commanded them. And then it says, mm-hmm. A fire came forth from before Hashem and consumed them, and they died before Hashem. So Rashi says, mm-hmm. The sons of Aaron did not die, but for the fact that they rendered a halachic decision in the presence of their teacher, Moshe. Rashi goes on to say another reason, but this reason is that they were not commanded to bring this sacrifice. In other words, and it wasn't sanctioned by Moshe, and they decided on their own. So that's the first lesson. If you are a Talmud, and your rabbi is there, you must be 100% certain that it's okay by the rabbi. And the rabbi, in the Kutisichas, Chelek, Yud Beis, Parsha Shmini, speaks about this Rashi, and part of the Sicha, the rabbi says as follows, that a person shouldn't say, Lam dananivit talmud chacham I'm a scholar, ve'ech e a bottle of rav, how am I going to lower myself and nullify myself before a rabbi and wait for him to teach me Torah and about the world and how I should serve the Ebishter? I could decide on my own. And the Rebbe says, Who's greater than other Vaviu? And still, this was their whole sin. Allah. 
Anyways, so that's the immediate lesson that ever takes from this story, how important it is to make sure that what you're doing has the approval of the rabbi, that that was their main sin. Now, obviously, it's on many levels. First of all, a person should have a Rebbe, obviously. But now we're taking it now, not only on the level of a Rebbe, but a teacher, a rabbi. And this is the lesson that we have to take from the story of Nadav Avihu, at least one of the lessons. The stories of the Friedrich Rebbe, where he repeated from his mashpia, his mashpia was the Rashbats, and the Rashbats would talk about certain chassidim, they used to, like, if you have a chassid who comes along, and you say, who is your teacher, who is your mashpia? And he says, I'm a self-made man, I'm a self-made chassid. So the Rashbats used to call it, and he gave a parable, and it was called, Yasam Sapoznik. What does it mean, Yasam Sapoznik? It's a Russian expression. And the parable he gave was, there was once a Russian peasant, and he found the period film, and he wanted to sell it. He knew it's a Jewish item, some Judaic. <laughs> so he wanted to sell it, but he doesn't even know what the film are. He's dragging the film by the straps, and the bottom are on the ground. And he's walking along, dragging the film by the straps with the bottom on the street, on the ground. He walks over to the first Jew, and he says, No, you want to buy this? The Jew is horrified, he's shocked when he sees what's going on over here. He tells the Russian peasant, How did you get this? And the Russian peasant has no idea what he's talking about. He doesn't realize how ridiculous and how out of depth he is that he just answers, Yes, I'm Sapoznik. I made it myself. <laughs> so obviously, it's impossible. It makes no sense. It's nonsensical. So the Rashbats were saying the same thing. Imagine a chassid says, he's self-made. He's like that Russian peasant who says that he made the tool himself. So you can understand already what it's going to look like. And this is also, we see this point is reinforced again and again in the Pirkei Obis of this week. First of all, we say, Moshe Kibbal Teiramisinai. The whole point is that Moshe is Merkabal. He's a receiver. He's a good student. And then it's passed on. So this idea of smicha and it's passed on. You have to receive it. And then how many times do we have the same exact words repeated in a Pelik twice? In two different Mishnas. Aseil Kharav in Pelik Aleph. It's mentioned in two different Mishnas. And I'm sure there's explanations for it. But then we also have the Mishnah where it says, Yi beis vad Your house should be a meeting house for scholars. And you should sit. You should, you should bask in, in, in the earth next to the feet. That means, that means you're hanging around them, observing them, watching them. Shimush. And drink their words with thirst. So this is something that has to be stressed again and again and again. What I saw from my mashpim, I've mentioned this already before. First of all, from Reb Meir Tzibel. I'm not going to repeat it. But I heard that when he was a bacher, whenever there was an elter chassid that came to the Rebbe, he would spend hours and hours and hours milking this chassid, receiving from him. Whatever he had to tell about his life history, about the history of Chassidim, etc. Interestingly, Reb Yale, who's one of the greatest Chassidim that ever lived, and a great scholar in his own mind, and a super genius. So, first of all, we hear from him always stories of Chassidim that he observed. He always speaks about Reb Zalman Meisha. But you know what's also interesting? There was a Chassid, Reb Avram Ayar, who was a very elevated Chassid, but for some reason, there was a certain time where he wasn't in favor by some other chassidim. They thought that he did something that was not okay. Whatever it is, it's irrelevant. But guess what? Reb Yoel Khan, who's the biggest makusha to the Rebbe, the one who's the closest to the Rebbe, and so attached, 
he kept close ties with Rav Avram Mayor the whole time. Not only that, he had a quiz with Rav Avram Mayor a couple times a week. They used to learn, I think, in Nebina. So here's a Biel Khan, scholar par excellence, Mashpia par excellence, Chosid par excellence. And what is he doing? He's hanging out and learning from a chassid who's from a previous generation, even though by a very large majority, by some hot-blooded, zealous chassidim, Rebbe Avram Bayer was already seen out of flavor, out of favor, and still Rebbe Yael did not look at what other people thought, and he was makabal from Avram Bayer. So that tells you, whoever's a true chassid has a mashpia, has a rav, he could tell you who his mashpia is. He could tell you who's a rav. And that's a lesson in life. You want to know about somebody? Find out who is his mentor. Who are your heroes? Who do you look up to? And if you go over to a chassid, and you go over to a scholar, a rabbi, and you ask him, who are your rabbis? Who are your heroes? Who are your mentors? And he can't really say, there's something very, very wrong. And this is what we learned from the Mishnah in Pirkei Ovis. This is what we learned from Pasha Shmini. And now we come to Chofches Nisan. The Rebbe said, Tut altsvus you can't. Do whatever you can. And by the way, this is really a dilemma. There's a dilemma over here, in a way. And that is the question of how we have the balance of initiative. Like, what's, what's the meaning of a good student? On one hand, you're going to say a good student <coughs> is the one who was like the sister and he didn't lose one drop. Bear sued. So he's the ultimate recorder. And he recorded and heard everything and absorbed everything. But on the other hand, he's a Mayan and Gaber. He took it further. He has creativity. And the same thing's over here. It is a question. And to be honest with you, I don't have 100% the answer. Sometimes we say that the main thing is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We have to stick to the basics and make sure everything is straight and has our skoma from a rov, etc., of course. But on the other hand, there is an idea of taking initiative. Now, when the Rebbe says, Tut Altsvah Sekent, and he said, the only reason he's screaming at Masai is because I'm telling you to scream at Masai. So he's tra- the Rebbe is saying that till now, it's because someone is supervising you and overlooking you, and therefore you're doing what you're doing. I want it to become your own. You have to take responsibility. True. Agreed. But at the same time, you have to be very careful not to try to come up with any new gimmicks or shortcuts and things that have no real basis. So the real truth is, I say l'charav, everyone should have their mashpia, everyone should have their rabbi, make sure you ask, consult, and make sure you get the stamp of approval. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I'm just telling you what I believe, in my humble opinion, is the right approach. And we have to think about this very carefully. Because this is what it means when we say, what was wrong with Nadav Aviyu? That was the problem. What does the Pesach say? They brought an Eish Zara, an alien fire. So one could argue and say, the fire is good. It's good to have a fire. You have a passion. <coughs> Excuse me. You have a passion. You have an excitement. You have drive. That's fantastic. Absolutely. But it could be an age zara. It has its origin in the wrong place. It's the wrong time. It's something that you invented. So therefore it could be very wrong. So that's why you have to be careful. You have to have an age. You should have an age. Get ignited. Light the fire. Ignite the flame. Fan the flame. Have passion. But make sure it's not an age zara. And the only way you can make sure that it's not an age zara, it's not alien, is when you have proper guidance of a rav or a mashpia. And this is also connected to a story of the Rebbe Marash, that there was a chassid, his name was Rabbi Yitzchigel Rafalovich, and he was by the Rebbe Marash, 
the fourth Lubavitcher Rebbe won Rosh Hashanah. And the Rebbe Marash had blowed Shafer, had blown the Shafer, and he blew 42 truths. And this was a rov, the Kremit Sugar rov. And he heard the Rebbe Marash's 42 truths, and he didn't understand why there's 42 truths. So he decided he's going to ask the Rebbe Marash. When he came to Yechidis, into the Rebbe Marash, the Rebbe Marash told him, What's main to? As Machshav Zoris, haste nor Shtusim Vavolim. What do you think Machshav Zoris are? Alien thoughts. Usually, if you look at Musa Svarim and you uh, say Machshav Zoris, Machshav Zoris are usually connected to things that are the opposite of Tsnias and uh, not rated the G, so to speak, and something which is not refined and, and, and coarse and callous, etc., etc., low. So the Rebbe says, no, that's not Machshav Vizoris. What's Mainstar? But in the Chassidus, everything is more refined. So he says, what's Mainstar? Is Machshav Vizoris? He's not Shtusim Vavolim. What do you think Machshav Vizoris are? Thinking foolish thoughts about petty trivialities. The Mentracht was Mendarthnit. When you think what you're not meant to think, I feel in Kedusha, even in holiness. Heistos oich machshav azaris. That's also called alien thoughts. What do you mean alien? Alien thought. You're meant to be thinking about it at this very moment. So, the Rebbe Marash was telling this chassid, when you said the brach, when you answered, Amin to l'shmeakel sheifar, you're meant to be thinking about tshuva. You're meant to be thinking about how to get close to Hashem. And what were you thinking about? You were counting the amount of of truest that I was blowing. So that was a Machshav Zara. Obviously, you refined Machshav Zara. And this is the same shot over here. Eish Zara. Sometimes we could have misguided intentions. Sometimes we could have, you know, great ideas. But it's still an Eish Zara. So the Ebesh should help. We should take the Rebbe's instructions. Tut Altsvus can't Do everything we can. That Mashiach should be our reality. And not sleep nights. Being focused on this mission. To make it happen. And that we should really care about it. And this should become everyone's mission in life. Kol yemei chayecha. L'chovi l'meisa Mashiach. That our entire life is to bring Mashiach. And if we will take it honestly. Properly. L'shmo. L'shem shemayim. Then we will definitely accomplish what the Rebbe wants, Begula Mitzvah Shleimo, take it from a yad, mamish. Posting from my home, Be'ez Hashem Yisborech, your man in Melbourne.